a warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the program today, Nigeria's economy grows by 1.92% in the fourth quarter of 2017. Lankland Nene re replaces Malusi Gigaba as South African Finance Minister in a cabinet reshuffle on Monday. Plus, Anglo Gold seeks Tanzania talks to break on pass on mine laws. We start off the show here in Nigeria as the country's um, gross domestic product grew by 1.92% in the fourth quarter of 2017, maintaining its positive growth since the economy emerged from recession in the second quarter of 2017. The full year 2017, however, recorded a real annual growth rate of 0.83% compared to minus 1.58% in 2016. Aggregate GDP was also higher at 31.209 trillion naira in nominal terms, resulting in a nominal GDP growth of 6.99%. The data shows non-oil GDP grew 1.45% in the fourth quarter, while oil GDP grew 8.38% also in the same period. And to the markets now, the South African JSC index was looking green at intraday after the cabinet reshuffle that saw former two finance ministers back into government. The index was up 0.59%. On the other hand, the market here in Nigeria was down 0.16% after an unimpressive full year 2017 GDP number. Egypt was also in the green, up 0.66%, and Nairobi closed in the red on Monday. And in the Middle East, stock markets mostly moved narrowly at intraday, although Vodafone Qatar soared in response to a stream of positive news. Vodafone Qatar, by far the most heavily traded stock in its market, jumped 9.1%. The Qatari stock index was down 0.70%. Saudi Arabia's index edged up 0.18% as national industrialization company. The most heavily traded stock jumped 7.1% after reporting that annual net profit soared to 716.2 million rials from 101.4 million rials. Dubai's index fell 0.61% as Shua Capital fell back 1.8%. Abu Dhabi was up 0.13%. And in Europe, stocks traded higher in early trade as investors monitored the release of economic data and await Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell's highly anticipated testimony later in the session. Let's bring in Daniel now for more. Hello, Daniel. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hi there, Jimmy. Hope you're doing uh, just great. It's a beautiful day here, a cold day in Frankfurt. I'm doing very well. It's a beautiful day here, too. Now, the new U.S. Fed Chair, Jerome Powell, is due to make his debut address to Congress later today. How crucial is Powell's congressional briefing for the financial markets at a time when uh, many traders are concerned about the Fed's normalization policy after years of post-crisis stimulus? Yeah, his speech is uh, expected to be happening at 4 p.m. Uh, German local time, so still some time to go. Investors, yeah, will be listening very closely what he will have to say, mostly, of, of course, about the monetary policy of uh, the Fed. We remember that uh, Mr. Powell has been working uh, for the Fed already uh, under the leadership of uh, Janet Yellen for quite some time, and that uh, many expect that even though the economy is booming that he will be adjusting very carefully the level of interest rates in the United States uh, with a fear of uh, a possible inflation higher wages less people being unemployed we saw about three weeks uh, ago uh, you know this co major correction happening on Wall Street because investors were uh, very worried that we might see three maybe four even maybe even five interest rate hikes happening in the United States
And because of that, of course, there's always this fear of investors that with higher interest rates, the traditional equity market is not any more that interesting, that uh, the equity market would have uh, less liquidity that investors might think, well, with higher interest rates, there are also other ways to invest your money. That was the main reason why we have seen shares dropping by that time worldwide. We don't uh, really uh, think at the moment that there are going to be more than three interest rates hikes happening uh, this year, all in a range of between 1.25 and 1.5 uh, percent. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be very interesting what he has to say, because even though he has been working uh, for the Fed already for quite some time, we don't really know too much uh, what is really on his mind. And um, another interesting news today is that the U.S. media giant Comcast is um, taking on American rival Fox News by proposing nearly $30 billion in cash offered to buy UK Sky Group. Unpack this high-stake media chase game for us, Daniel. Yeah, exactly, Jimmy. Uh, Comcast, the owner of NBC and also a Universal Picture, has launched a bid for the British pay TV broadcaster Sky uh, that uh, threatens uh, to throughout the takeover ambitious of a media mogul Rupert Murdoch. The firm is offering, you mentioned, a 20 point, uh, 22.1 billion pounds that uh, equals 29.5 uh, billion US dollars for Sky. The proposed cash offer value each Sky share at a level of about 12.50 pounds, which represents a 16% premium to the bid made by Murdoch's 21st Century Box. Uh, we received already a statement from the Comcast CEO, Brian Roberts. He calls a Sky uh, an outstanding uh, company that would boost a Compass a global uh, presence. Uh, he's also stating that with Sky, the, uh, it is very interesting because uh, they already have a huge uh, presence here uh, in Europe, for example, in uh, London and uh, Austria, Germany, Ireland, they're using Sky as a platform for more growth in Europe. Uh, Sky uh, has about 22.5 uh, million uh, customers here around Europe. So, of course, we see with this that this deal uh, really could make a lot of sense for Comcast. 